In the course of history in the United States, the right to vote has been subject to many changes. Voter discrimination took many forms, race, color, sex, age. When this country was formed in 1776, only white men over the age of 21 had the right to vote. Nearly 100 years passed before the 15th Amendment to the Constitution granted the right to vote to any male over the age of 21, regardless of race, color, or condition of servitude. Another 50 years passed before women were granted equal voting rights. And it was not until 1971 that the age to vote was lowered from 21 to 18. Americans have fought wars and marched in the streets to preserve and protect the rights of its citizens. And nothing is more precious than the right to vote. But over the years, political parties have worked to put their interests ahead of a citizen's right to vote. Today in the United States, we have a two-party system, Republicans and Democrats. They are so powerful that they control who can and can't vote. How do they do that? Major elections in a two-party system are often held in two phases. The first phase is the primary election. In the primary election, party members choose which candidates they want to represent them on the general election ballot. For historical context, primaries were introduced in the progressive era in the early 20th century to weaken the power of bosses and make the system more democratic. In presidential elections, party primary elections became important starting in 1952 when the first in the nation New Hampshire primary helped give Dwight D. Eisenhower the Republican nomination. But over the past 50 years, the two major political parties have passed laws in every state designed to restrict the right to vote for anyone who doesn't join their party. Today, in the primary elections, party members choose which candidates they want to represent them on the general election ballot. And the voters who are not party members simply can't vote, unless they join a party. The winner of the general election becomes the elected official, who must then represent everyone, not just their party. But what if you, like nearly half of American voters, don't think either party represents you? What if you couldn't participate in selecting the candidates for the general election because you weren't a member of either party? Well, then your vote probably doesn't matter. This is because the Democrat and Republican parties control taxpayer-funded primary elections and they prohibit voters from participating based on their political choices. Either join a political party, or you can't vote at all in most states. And that is where we are at today. Primary elections serve the purpose of electing someone to represent the party on the general election ballot. And over the years, both parties have worked together to manipulate the rules to make it impossible for anyone who doesn't first win a party primary to have a chance in the general election. Gerrymandering, for example, is when legislators draw districts so that the seat is safe for one party or the other. And, as a result of this party protection scheme, over 90% of elections are decided during the primary. So the general election doesn't really matter. Yet, the largest group of voters in the country are independents who don't want to join or support either party. That's one important reason why voter turnout is at an all-time low. The reality is that we have a democracy where you have to choose between your right to vote and your right to not join one of the two major political parties. Remember, we mentioned the first in the nation New Hampshire presidential primary? Well, 43% of all voters in New Hampshire can't vote in that primary. If they do, they're forced to join the Republican or Democratic Party. And what is the purpose of that New Hampshire primary? To select the best nominee for the American people? No. It's to select a nominee for president that best represents the party. Voter turnout is at an all-time low. In New Jersey, for example, less than 5% of voters participated in the 2015 primary. If you can't or don't vote, you aren't represented. So, is it any wonder why representatives seem to represent their party more than the public? It's directly related to an election system that serves them, not you. Parties have their own private election, where they determine the rules and the viable candidates for everyone else. But you have to pay for it. That's not right. Every voter deserves an equal right to meaningful participation in the public election process. Otherwise, we end up with a system that represents parties and not people. It's a system that encourages divisiveness and negativity. Further, 
public tax dollars should not be used to fund a private and divisive election process. But you can't leave it to party insiders to change the rules. They'll protect their interests by doing everything they can to prevent independent-minded voters from participating meaningfully. They will fight changes at the ballot box, in courtrooms, and in the news.